Hi all, and welcome to lesson 13, how to calculate introduction and falsification. This lesson is very important. To the core of decent chess playing lies the ability to calculate well. Calculation in itself is difficult to define. As far as the analytical approach is concerned, it is phase 3, in which you are supposed to calculate the candidate moves. But what exactly are we supposed to do then? And what does calculation mean? Well, together with phase 4, the evaluation of the candidate move, calculation is supposed to ultimately lead to your choice of move, preferably the best one or a decent one. Okay, now let me share a very obvious but also very important truth with you. If it is your move, the truth of the position lies first in your possible move. If it is your opponent's move, then the truth of the position lies first in his possible move. Now this idea is closely related to the scientific notion of falsification, where a theory is considered to be valid, as long as it cannot be proven to be wrong. Likewise, your candidate move can be considered to be good, in relation to what you want to achieve, unless it can be countered by your opponent with a move that crosses your plans. The same holds true vice versa on each and every move. So if you discover a candidate as a response to his answer that again turns the tables in your favor, then you are falsificating or refuting, if you like, your opponent's move and still upholding your first candidate etc. If you incorporate this mechanism of falsification into your play, it can be a real God's gift, because it forces you to look for the best moves for both yourself and your opponent, and it seriously improves the quality of your calculation. So, in a way, phase 3 is the same as phase 2, right? So, calculation is the same as finding candidate moves. So, you constantly when calculating, are looking for candidate moves. And in this case, not just for yourself, but if you're honest, also for your opponent. I stress this again, because in numerous cases I have seen that players do not understand this basic chess mechanism of my move, your move, my move, your move, etc. And it is in this mechanism, this basic characteristic of the game, where both players move alternatively, that the truth of the position lies. So, phase 3 calculation is very much like phase 2, the selection of candidate moves. You continue to look for candidate moves only now deeper and deeper. And as guides to lead you through the maze of possibilities, you have the original tactical breakdown you did in phase 1, and also the idea of threat and forcefulness of the position. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit also about the psychological nature of calculation. Where phase 1, tactical breakdown, and phase 2, selection of candidate moves, are maybe cumbersome, calculation can become really bothersome. In phase 1 and 2, you don't really need your visualization skills that much. You can try to find everything from the position at hand. However, with the selection of deeper candidate moves, some other important cognitive skills start to take part as well. For instance, visualization. How well is your skill developed? Memory. You have to store candidates and branches, and later on also evaluations of positions, and be able to remember them in order to compare them, etc. Also concentration and the ability to keep track of the changes on the board, etc. So this means that normally calculation can be quite difficult. And this is, well, probably the most important area where you should really try to improve. Also, there are some more psychological factors like stamina, or perfectionism that gets in the way, or the, uh, the everlasting battle between your intuition and your ratio, and last but not least, a long...